Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Well, welcome to Influence Church. And if you are new uh, with us today, uh, last Sunday we started a new series called I Am Jesus. No, I'm not Jesus. That's the name of the series, as I said last Sunday. Uh, and we are looking at the Gospel of John, and we are looking at four of the I am statements that Jesus made. You might wonder what I am statements are. Those are statements that we find in the Gospel of John that Jesus said about himself. So uh, last Sunday, we uh, talked and we learned about the I am statement where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Last Sunday, we learned that actually the resurrection is not an event, and actually it's a person. Resurrection is Jesus Christ. And also we learned that um, God's delays are not God's denials, as some of us assume uh, that. Today, we are going to uh, look at another I am statement that is saying, uh, uh, like, is saying this in John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So what does a good shepherd do? He lays down his life for the sheep. But if we are looking at this verse... When Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, that means are some bad shepherd out there also. Um, implies that are others not so good and also are some uh, bad shepherd that are trying to hurt the sheep. Jesus doesn't just imply that. Actually, he's saying this in John 10 verse 1. I am. Tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. So he is talking about our spiritual enemy and his name is Satan. He is a prince of darkness and he hates God and he hates the children of God. His mission is to steal, to kill, to destroy everything that God loves, everything that is good, everything that is healthy, everything that is pure, everything that is worth it. He wants to destroy it. Without him in this world, I am sure we will be much better. So, John 10.10 10 says, Jesus said this, The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But the good, good shepherd said, my purpose is to give them to the sheep, give them a rich and satisfying life. Another translation said, I want my sheep, I want my children to have life and have life abundantly. I know in today's world, in it's almost impossible to think that you can have life and have life abundantly. Because let's be honest, we are living in a world full of hurt, full of sickness, full of disappointments, full of politics, full of whatever. And it's really, really hard to imagine that we could have an abundant life. But this is God's design. This is God's purpose. And as we are going to discover, if we are going to uh, search for this good shepherd, if we will accept this good shepherd as our shepherd, we will start experiencing abundant life. But if we are talking about a good shepherd, that means we are the sheep. And that's not good news. Because sheep, are not very clean animals. Are I had the, I almost called the honor, but I think it was a nightmare. My uncle in Romania uh, had always between 200 and 300 sheep. And I was blessed to work with him for a week. 
man, that was the hardest, most terrible, and stinkiest job I ever had. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a couple of stories and experiences from uh, my short week, but sure felt very, very long working for him. So for the record, the sheep animal, it's mentioned around 200 times in the Bible. Dogs are mentioned around 44 times in the Bible. Cats are zero mentioned in the Bible. None. Nada. Except if you are looking at a lion, which it is from the cat family. But even then, the Bible said this, the Satan is roaring like a lion looking to destroy. Do you see the correlation? Do you see the direct relation between the lion and the cats or the Satan and the cats? I'm just kidding. I know some of you are cat people here that love cats, <laughs> right? I better move on uh, with that. No, I don't hate cats. I just like more other animals. So now that we are sheep, it's not a great news because the sheep are the stupidest animals on planet Earth, in my opinion. See, if you go to a circus, you can see trained elephants, you can see trained dogs, you can see trained uh, birds, you can see trained donkeys, you can see even trained monkeys. I never ever seen a trained sheep in a circus because it's not possible to train them. They are just stupid. The only way to train a sheep to play dead is to shoot it. And even then, that trick, it's working only once <laughs> and it's game over. Okay. So, if, we are, if you are taking notes, let me tell you four challenges of being a sheep. Number one challenge of the sheep is they get lost easily. My wife will say amen to that. I tried to get home a couple months ago and we are coming on 94 and I ended up in Alberville. I have no idea how, but the story of my life. For this reason, you know, I love GPS. Whoever created that should have made a lot of money because keep me on track all the time. But even then, I hear a lot of time rerouting, rerouting. So, it is very common for a sheep to walk away from the sheepfold, from their uh, barn. And a lot of time you'll see a sheep going like, oh, I think I'll go this way, and then I think I'll go this way. It's no direction, it's just wandering around, it's just walking around with no purpose. And you know, it's a Bible verse in, uh, I think it's in Isaiah uh, 53, that is saying, we all like sheep were wander away. And let's be honest, how many of us just go through life, oh, I think I'm going this way, this is going to make me happy, or no, I think I'm going to go this way because this one is going to make me rich, or, and we're just wandering and wandering and trying to just make sense of this life, but technically with no purpose. We get lost so easily. Many of us making so many uh, wrong decisions and we are taking so wrong turns that we are wondering sometimes, how did I end up here crying out loud? Number two challenge of being a sheep is that sheep are defenseless. If you look at any other animals or birds, they have, you know, uh, claws, they have uh, wings, they have horns. Some of them they can kick and some of them blend with the environment just to hide themselves. Almost every other animal has some defensive uh, weapons. Not the sheep. Sheep cannot do any of those. Now, 
warning, this is going to be a bad joke. What does sheep do when they are attacked? They will just say, back off. I told you it's going to be a bad joke. If you need counseling for that, please see me after the service. But let's be honest. Sheep are so defenseless that they cannot defend themselves. And for this reason, they need a good shepherd in their lives that will be able to protect them. Number three challenge of being a sheep is that sheep are very stubborn. Please look at some next to you and say, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> Go ahead and say, you look like a sheep. <laughs> you look incredibly stubborn. <laughs> I know some of you doesn't do it, right? I'm talking to you. You are stubborn. I'm telling you what to do and you won't do it. <laughs> but this is a story of our lives. I heard this story that sheep, sometimes when they get stuck between two rocks and the space is so small that they cannot move any further, they just keep pushing, lodging themselves between the rocks. They just keep going forward and forward and forward because they are so stubborn. In their lives, in their mind, because of stubbornness and stupidity is no back out option is you you'll never hear beep 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 and the ship going backwards it's just not in their mind because they are so so stubborn trying to push forward and let's be honest how many of us did that in our life we can just push through and push and push and push and push sometimes we don't see it we don't see sees a light at the end of the tunnel, sometimes we know it's wrong to do that, but we keep just pushing forward, knowing that it's not an option to get on the other side. How many of you know someone that been really, really stubborn? Please raise your hand. If you ever found somebody or know someone, right? Please don't point out to them. <laughs> because I don't want to enter too much counseling this week. But I hear so many times uh, when I was leading young adults uh, in Romania, so many uh, girls will keep telling me like, I'm dating only the bad guy, only the bad guy. They are so attracted to me and I never dated a good guy. And at one moment I got so frustrated, it's like, honey, it's because you are fishing with the wrong bait. It's not about who is out there. It's about what we are doing. Uh, I hear so many people saying, oh, I'm broke. I'll always be broke. I never have money and I don't know what to do. I don't have money. I don't have money. And then I hear, let's go to the mall to talk about it. What's wrong with that? I have a friend that actually... Uh, struggle with money and health at the same time. But he spent between five to six hundred dollars smoking a month. I was like, dude, I found your solution. It's right there. But he cannot see it because of stubbornness. Number four challenge of being a sheep is that sheep are filthy are dirty. I know some of you might say, yeah, but I saw on TV that nice, white, fluffy sheep. Well, that because that dude was probably power washed before the show. <laughs> so I uh, t told you at the beginning, I uh, been part of shepherding this uh, around 200 some uh, sheep. And it's amazing how much excuse me, the word crap they leave behind. You know, most of the animals, they choose a spot and they do it there, not the sheep. They just walk and do it. It's like mess everywhere they go. It's messy everywhere they go. And stinky also. If you are in the summertime, they are stinketh. 
uh, if you were with us last Sunday, I was talking about that word. It's more like a, a holy stink. It's so stinketh that literally sometimes you need to wear a mask uh, over your mouth. And the bad part about that is when they were in the ship fold, when I was uh, with my uncle, literally we supposed to put boots on before we enter the ship hold sheepfold because it was so so messy it's not like you can walk around here and around here you can go between because it's just kind of a mat of just crap they are very filthy they are very messy and without a shepherd without someone to come and clean after them or clean them they will never be clean Sheep need a shepherd. We need Jesus. Now, I want to spend the rest of my uh, time talking about what does the good shepherd do. When uh, Jesus said this uh, statement, I am the good shepherd and uh, I lay down my uh, life for the sheep. He didn't meant, he didn't want it to, for us to feel terrible and feel about just stinkiness and stubbornness and stupidness and so forth. He wanted to show us how much need we have in our life for a good shepherd. And this is something that I want each one of us to take with at the end of the service, at the end of this message, and not just learn about it, but apply it in our lives. So, what does a good shepherd do? First, he guides. The good shepherd guides. We see this in Psalm 23, verse 3. David said this. The Lord guides me, David said. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. If we allow him, he's going to guide him. But that means we need to follow Did you ever find yourself not knowing what decision to make? Did you ever find yourself to uh, intersection and you have two, three, or even five roads in front of you and you are wondering which one should I take? And just being sometimes confused. If we are seeking, if we are searching for this good shepherd, he's going to lead us, he's going to guide us, he's going to help us to choose the right path. John 10, verse 3 and 4 said this. The gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd. And the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. And they follow him because they know his voice this is very important the sheep recognize his voice you might say but i don't know god's voice i just don't know his voice let me tell you just a story think about it a 50 ladies in a room talking because that's what they do ladies talk when they are in a room all 50 at the same time and they understand each other at the same time you walk in a room with 50 guys and nobody's talking because everyone is watching the game <laughs> but anyhow back to the ladies right if you walk in a room and 50 ladies are there all talking and my wife is one of them will you recognize the voice of my uh, my wife's voice probably not and probably because of two reasons one, you don't know her, and second, you didn't spend enough time with her to hear her voice or to know her voice. It's the same with the Good Shepherd. We have to spend time with him, we have to get to know him, <clears throat> we have to keep listening to his voice to be able to recognize it out there. <clears throat> More time we spend with the shepherd, easier is going to be for us to recognize his voice. It's that simple. 
something that is really, really uh, interesting is that, yeah, but I don't know when he's speaking or how he's speaking. Does he ever speak to you in audible voice? To be honest with you, it happens only probably two or three times in my whole life that I kind of hear a voice. Most of the time, God doesn't speak in audible voice in today's world. But you know what? God speaks through his word, through the Bible. If you keep reading it, you'll get to know his voice. Sometimes people talk, sometimes God talks to circumstances around us. Sometimes God speaks through people around us. Yeah, sometimes through the one that you don't like at all. Sometimes they got to speak or talk to a politician that you cannot stand. God speak mysterious way and multiple ways. Try to not put God in a box that thinking this is the only way. Thanks. Man, so great team here. They read my mind. <clears throat> we should promote you, Eric. <clears throat> <clears throat> So, we need to spend time with this shepherd to be able to recognize, to be able to know him. And the more you spend time with the right people that know the shepherd, the more time you spend in the word of God, that it's his voice, because it is, it is his word, the more we will develop awareness on, of when God is speaking to us and how he's speaking to us. The good shepherd also, besides guides, he provides. Psalm 23, David said in verse 1 to 3, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul are free Bible verses, but it's so much depth. It's so much hidden in the, those two verses that I would like to just highlight three things. He makes me lay down in green pastures. You know, how many of you seen sheep laying down? Not too often, because they are just standing up most of the time, almost all the time. A sheep has to be, three things has to happen for those sheep to be able to just lay down. The sheep has to be well fed. They have to get along with each other. And they have to feel safe. Or they won't lay down. When David is saying, he makes me lay down in green pastures. That means God, the good shepherd, provided all those free for each one of us. For us to be able to just lay down. But without knowing the shepherd, without recognizing the shepherd, without spending time with the shepherd, we will not receive the benefits. Again, he provides the feed, uh, food, he helps us get along, and then he provides safety for us. He breaks, <clears throat> sometimes he breaks out, breaks up fights between us. Any of you been in a fight, not necessarily physical, but, you know, verbal fight? No? Just ask my wife. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm, I'm getting in trouble. I hope she's going to listen to my message after we have lunch. And by dinner, probably she'll just forgive me. But... We all argue, we all are sometimes fighting, but if we get to know the good shepherd and if we get to know his heart, we will learn to, we'll learn to realize that he wants us to get along. I'm not saying all have the same ideas. I'm not saying all have the same mindset. I'm not saying everybody see eye to eye. Sometimes we might have different opinions and that's okay. In today's world, it's kind of weird to have different opinion and do life together. Because if you, are have, if you have a different opinion, the culture is trying to cancel you. But let's be honest. 
the body of Christ is such a great uh, group of people because we all have different gifts, we all have different opinions, and we still are able to do life together because that's what the Good Shepherd wants for each one of us, to be able to do life together. Next thing that uh, David is saying that he leads me beside quiet waters. Actually, a sheep, if it's close to a river that it's rushing water and it's making noises, is not going to go close to that river. It's not going to drink any water. doesn't matter how thirsty it is. It's not going to go drink if it's a rushing river or a rushing water. So, when David is saying he leads me beside quiet water, that means he's providing the nourishing that we need. He, pro he leads us to a quiet space where we can receive what we need from the shepherd. And this is about food and water. But the third thing that David is saying is that he refreshes not just interested in providing the physical needs. He's going further because he cares about our spiritual life. He cares about our soul. Actually, he cares about our soul more than you might think. Actually, I think Jesus, God, is interested in our soul more than it's interested in our physical needs. Don't get me wrong. He's still going to provide the physical needs. He's still going to provide the nourishings and everything that we need, but he's more interesting how we are doing inside. I said last week, many of us for Easter, Christmas, we are putting nice clothes, we are putting a nice smile, and it's like, go around, you ask people, how are you doing? Oh, great, thank you. Life is awesome. But only God knows what actually happened inside. And you know what? The good shepherd cares for what is inside, not just for what is outside around us. So the good shepherd does not provide just outwards. He also provides what we need inwards, in our soul, in our hearts. So the good shepherd guides, provides, and also the good shepherd corrects. He Corrects. I know this is something that you don't want to hear on Sunday morning because it's not uplifting. How many of you think that uh, when I correct uh, my teenagers and told them like, hey, uh, no video games uh, tonight after 10 o'clock or after 8 o'clock or how many of you think that they are so excited and like, oh God, oh man, dad is disciplining us. I'm so happy. I just hope he will take us our phone also. None of them does that, right? I'm not sure if you have teenager, but I guarantee you, none of them is going to do that. So discipline is not something that we look forward to it. But how many of you think that discipline is needed in our lives, right? I see some of you raised two hands. <laughs> God, the good shepherd, corrects. I heard this uh, story about a loving shepherd that actually uh, had a lamp that was going astray all the time, was just wandering all the time and not staying with all the other sheep. And this uh, loving shepherd actually used the rod um, and hit the lamp a uh, little hard that actually the lamp started limping little. So he was not wandering away too much anymore. And at that moment, actually the shepherd took the lamp put it on his shoulder, and he was carried around, carry him around. At that moment, the lamb understood God's goodness. Also, at that time, the lamb started getting used to the shepherd's voice. He got to know the shepherd. And for this reason, it's important to just understand correction sometimes it's for our own benefits. It's not just... Terrible things happen to us because God just loves to punish us. God doesn't love to punish either one, any of us. But sometimes he allows correction 
to just help us not keep making wrong decision after wrong decision after wrong decision. Sometimes he has to use a rod to help us realize that he is trying to correct us. Hebrew 12 is saying this. Actually, no, let's, yeah, let's go to Job. Blessed is the one whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For the wounds, for he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. And everything that's happening in our life, God can use to help us have a better life. Unfortunately, sometimes can be a lot of pain. Sometimes can be a lot of trauma. Sometimes can be a lot of uh, wounds. But you know what? God can use all of those to help us have a better life. Hebrew 12 said this, no discipline seem pleasant at the time but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. It's something good in the correction that God wants to bring to us. And let's try to embrace it. Let's try to accept it. Let's try to not look at it as a punishment. And it's just a small correction. Our good shepherd loves us so much that he is willing to correct us, to not make more stupid mistakes in our lives. And he's trying to keep us from harm way. So the good shepherd guides, provides, corrects, but also the good shepherd protects. He protects. This is what Bible said. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I told you earlier about the rod. And the rod is usually two, probably around two feet uh, long. It's pretty uh, thick stick uh, that we used when uh, I was helping my uncle to just kind of hurt little the sheep to be able to correct them and bring them back together. But also, the staff is different than the rod. See, the staff has a small uh, hoop, hoop at the end, and that's the purpose for just to save the sheep from not falling over the cliff, or to pull them, or to drag them, or to just bring them closer to the shepherd. So both are needed in uh, a shepherd's life, the rod and the staff. You, uh, Psalm 23, verse 5 is saying this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Let me just give you a, a little explanation of this verse. He um, anoint my head with oil. You might think like, what the heck is that? That's the purpose of safety and protecting the sheep because sheep are messy, as I said earlier. They are stinky, and because of that reason, a lot of flies are around them. Well, the flies usually fly in their nose, and most of the time, they just leave uh, eggs there. And when the larva uh, comes out, this is kind of a messy, um, sometimes they don't go south out, up north, and sometimes they go all the way in their brain. And it's bothering them so much that they will hit their head by rocks until they die. So when David is saying, he anoint my head with oil, he's protecting us from all that terrible things that could happen to us. He wants to be sure not bad stuff is getting in our brain, in our mind, and is just anointing our head for protection. 
And also David is saying, my cup overflows. Now, we are going from sheep to just wine, in my opinion. <laughs> See, when in the Palestinian homes and when they were celebrating, when they were having weddings, when they were uh, having guests over, in that culture was that everyone is welcome as long as the cup is full. So if the host will keep filling the cups, that means they are welcome to stay. When the cup is empty, that means it's time to go. I don't know if you remember the first miracle that Jesus did of the trans transforming the water in wine was very, very important because without the wine at the wedding, uh, that means people and guests there were not welcome anymore. And that will have been a terrible embarrassing for the family, for the newly wed. So as long as the cup is full, and David is saying, my cup it overflows, my cup overflows. That means we are always, always welcome in the shepherd's presence. We are always, always welcome to be with God. He always wanted want us there. He always wants our cup to be full. He wants always, he always, always wants us to feel that we are wanted. So, Psalm 23 verse 6 is saying this, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Everything that the good shepherd does in our lives, everything that he brings in our life, is to help us to be able to spend eternity in the house of the Lord. To spend forever with him in eternity. So, every time you go through a trials or through a test, every time you feel like you are little corrected here or there, I would like you to not feel like it's a punishment from God, but it is his good shepherd's heart and desire to help us have a life and have abundant life. It's another uh, verse in the Bible that is saying this. A good shepherd will leave the 99 sheep and go for the one that is lost. In my story, in my uh, terrible, long, awful week with my uncle, uh, every time we will come back uh, home to the sheepfold, we will just open a small gate and then count them one by one as they were coming in. And once did happen that we were short one. And we had to go all the way back and look for it. And I was so mad at that sheep. But that's not the good father. My uncle found her and just led her back so kindly, so nicely. If it would have been me, I would be like, get back there. But not him. Because he really understood that sheep are wandering. It's in their nature. But a good shepherd is always, always there to help us, to guide us, to protect us, to help us, to be able to feel safe and to bring us back home when we are wandering away. I want to just give you a, a small story. Was a drama um, college professor and he was teaching his class about Psalm 23. And he wanted to show the class how good he is. So he started saying, reciting the Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lay down in green pastures. And everybody was so excited. The whole class started clapping and give him praises. And at the end, everyone was standing up and give him ovation. After he did that, he looked in the first row and was this uh, 
small student, very timid Christian. And it's like, now you do it. So the new student came up front and he starts saying the psalm. And he starts, the Lord is my shepherd. And in his mind, everything good and everything that happened in his life about what God really did in his life start touching him. And then it's like, I lack nothing. At that moment, he start crying. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads, my, he leads me besides quiet waters. And he couldn't hold it. He was so emotional and crying that he barely made it through Psalm 23, which are only six verses. At the end, no one was clapping. No one stand up. But everyone was in tears. The drama professor said this, well, here you go, you have it. I know the psalm. He knows the shepherd. I would like at the end of today, each one of us, to have the capability, to have that option to say, you know what? I might not know the verse, I might not know the psalm, but I know the shepherd. Because at the end, that all he wants. The good shepherd wants us to know him. Not how much we know from the Bible, not how much we can recite from the Bible, not how many times we make the right decision. He wants just for us to know the shepherd. Let's stand up. Please stand up with me. You might face some decision in your life that might be financial decision, might be health decision, might be relational decision. Whatever decision you might have to make in life, this good shepherd can lead you to make the right decision. Let's be intentional in getting to know him through the Bible, through worship, through song, through praising God, also through good friends around us that probably they know the shepherd more than we know. I would like each one of you to just close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes, no cheering, no peeking. This is just between you and God. And if you never gave your life to Christ, if you never accepted Jesus in your life, that he is a good shepherd, I want to give you that opportunity right now. It's no better time to do it than right now. I'm not sure if you are here in this room, but if you are here in this room, please raise your hand. If you are watching online, I would like you to just raise your hand because this is a sign that God is looking for. And God is watching you and he knows that you made that decision today. And I would like all of us to just say this quick prayer. Heavenly Father, I accept Jesus Christ as a savior in my life. I made bad decision. I took wrong turns. But today, I choose you as my good shepherd. Lead me, guide me, protect me, provide for me, and help me to get to know you more and more in the days, weeks, and months to come. If you said that prayer, I would like, if you are here, see me at the back of the auditorium after the service. I have a book that we want to give you. If you gave your life to Christ online, watching this message right now or later on, I would like for you to go on our website at Influence Church and just let us know. We will love to mail you this book that is going to help you 
get to know the heart of the good shepherd. It's going to help you to get to know him better in your life. Remember, the good shepherd guides, provides, corrects, and protects because that's who he is. It's not just what he does, that, he, that is who he is. A good shepherd is like a good, good father that loves to help his children. I'm not sure about you. I'm not sure if you have kids or not. But if my son will need a kidney, I will give him a kidney. If my son will need anything from my body, organ or anything, I will do it because he is my son and because I love him that much. The good shepherd, it's the good, good father that loves so much, loves each one of you so much that he gave his life as we celebrated a week ago for you and I to have life and life abundantly. Let's praise God with this song, A Good, Good Father.